Hello. All right. So welcome back, or welcome period if you're just joining. Tonight's hopefully the last evening. I'm gonna get working on the project for the the first keyboard. Yeah, I have two keyboards. I'm trying to fix up there. Some uh, some Kinesis Advantage ones. Or you got one half of my function. Uh, Function key row soldered up and ready to go. This is the second half using a 3D printed circuit board I designed. All the switches are there. They're soldered on the back. So we saw last time this pretty, pretty gnarly looking job to get this to work. I had to solder this copper tape because the leads on the switches are super short. Um, but that leaves me with the last set of connections to make, which I will do with uh, yeah, with this cable I'm about to cut up. It's a rainbow cable. I'm just gonna solder to this board, and then I should be good. Last time I was able to test half the function keys that are already soldered to the the uh, the motherboard. This time around, I will do the same, but with this half. So here goes nothing. Oh, by the way, I ordered some keyboard pads, some replacement pads to make the keyboards nice and shiny and new. I'm just gonna grab some water here from my sponge. trying something new on the music front. I'm trying to just play the music through my headphones like other people do on Twitch to avoid all the copyright violations and stuff like that. Put on ye olde soldering iron. And how many wires do I need for this again? on my desk here and just it's goo gone. I used a little earlier to clean up keyboard shell in preparation for placing the keyboard pads on it. Clean this up a bit. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten leads. Right. Ten leads. So one, two, three. Ten leads here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to separate these out, and then I'm going to cut the heads, the connectors off these cables. them
go. I'm just going to strip them. Let's just quickly bring up the configuration dialog so I can focus the camera if need be. Trusty, trusty wire stripper. Strip all these. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna twist the ends on this just a little bit, make it easier to solder so the conductors don't wind up everywhere. Got a nice rainbow thing going on here. And I'm getting ready to solder that. And last time I said it was easier to start with the innermost ones, or it would have been easier, but I didn't. This time I'll learn from my mistake, or not really a mistake, but a workflow optimization, let's call it. <laughs> Move the camera closer here in a minute. You guys can see what's going on here. <laughs> my my repetitive fails to get this position properly. All right. All right. for a nice shot though but <laughs> let me see if I can just move back just this midgen and then maybe adjust the focus a little bit all right
two down. And I'm not using this fan at all, wow. Gotta move this iron because it keeps getting stuck. All right, three down. This arm instead. One, two. of it done. Half of it? Or I can't count. Four out of ten, so forty percent. Try to this wire around. Not this wire, but this barb around on the other side. There we go. And then This alligator clip to hold it at a more interesting angle. The answer to that appears to be no. Alright, that didn't look too bad. Alright. Got a bigger plane, a little, a little longer to heat up there. You can see the wires though, They're doing a much better job, much more interesting looking job than the beads wires being these guys over here and over here, over here, over here. Look a lot better these joints than these garbage looking joints here that are, despite all appearances, quite functional.
I really hope I can use this tomorrow at work. That would be awesome. One, two, three. All right. Be a huge quality of life improvement. to work here <laughs> oh man regardless of the type of you know, third hand you have or whatever, it's always a pain to position these wires right. Always a pain. I just don't have the trick, you know. Give up for it, don't give up. <laughs> All right, that looks good. All right, so by my calculations, this keyboard couple connections away from being fully functional again which would be awesome and let's move the camera back again innards <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull up here the diagram the wiring diagram I'd made and uh, I'll try to wire the keyboard up the same way just like I did for the other half all right so let's start with the top row which is the green on that diagram which is the last three over here Last three. Yes, so that is the black cable. Yep. Oh, wait. Ooh, tricky, tricky. Wait, wait, wait. 
Yeah. Ah, let me show this. This is kind of tricky. So this PCB has some, will you please focus, please? <laughs> I'll do that manually again. All right. So it has some traces that are unconnected. Now the other one, they all are connected except for the bottom ones. So on this one, I'll have to be wary to skip the connectors for the ones that weren't connected here because my circuit actually uh, duplicates the logic that's on this one. So uh, they're trying to be crafty there. Okay, so top conductor is black. We said that's correct. And then comes red, which was the massive one that connects to all three. That's green. All right. Okay. Then comes blue, which is fourth on the left. One, two, three, four, which is orange by itself, all by its lonesome. All right. And then yellow, which is second from the left, which is red here. And then green which is first, third, and fifth, which is yellow here. Put that connector in, there we go. No, say so, I want to do okay. And purple, which is the far end of the fifth switch. So, one, two, three, four, five, and then I said far end, that would be this one, and it's solo, which is gray. All right. Then comes red, which is again, oh, there's left side of the four switch, so one, two, three, four, which is blue here, again, solo. Um, and then cyan, which is three conductors, left side of four switch. And then this one, which I bet you is gonna be purple. One, two, three, four, that's correct. Purple. And then it's time to skip one. Skip one, then two more, then drop two. That's it. Okay, and then, so blue there, which is the second last, so brown. I have to skip one first, so I'll skip that one. And then the last one, which should be white, which should be the left side of the third from the right. One, two, three, which is white. Perfect. Ta da All right. So in theory, it is functional. Let me connect this to my PC. The actual USB part is here, I believe. USB controller. That's what I'm guessing it is. I think this is just the keyboard logic, and I think this is the USB part. Oh, sorry about that. Just getting a little light over here. 
I'm so jazzed. All right, let me, let me. Wait. Some of these keys are not gonna make it across RDP though. Okay, well still. goes nothing all right let me connect the keyboard and then uh oh see that's the problem with this is once you've got a couple there we go. Okay, so reset. Okay, and then this is the one I just connected, so it should be F8, I think. Uh-oh, nothing. That's unfortunate. Okay. Uh-oh. Again, nothing. Okay, so wait. I'm still getting multiple contacts though. That is really weird. And then nothing. Three, four, five, six. It's really weird that it's like registering these keys. So three, four, five, six are on this side. Wait, unless there's something like a remap one on there. Hmm. Get nothing from these red keys here. Just the first three ones. Getting F7 really well. Hmm. Is that correct? Is that F7? At least. I'm not even sure that's the right key to tell you the truth. Oh, this is the left side of the keyboard. Okay, sorry. Okay. So escape. So these should be the remap keys and everything. Okay, one of these is, I don't know if it's the soldering job that's weird or. Okay, let me just. problem like a wiring problem this worked perfectly last week uh, 
F7. Yeah, something's wonky here. All right. Uh, oh, wait, I got this wired all backwards. That's what's going on. Did I? Oh, okay, sorry. No, no, I just twisted it. Okay. Yeah, this is a seven. All right. I don't know why F698 are acting up. All right, let me double check what's going on here. Pull up keyboard. Okie dokie, first of all. What's going on here? Okay, let me just, the thing is, it shouldn't be connected if I wanna make these tests because it's probably connected on the motherboard somehow. Disconnect this for now. And move back. This view, and then let's see what's going on here. Okay, so there is false contact here. Okay. So there's only one place. Where it says things are screwed. And that is here. All right. I don't know whether that short circuit was enough to cause this whole problem, but yeah. And this one I can't double check because it's plugged into. So, all right, let me use my my reference again. So I said black. All right, green.
Orange. Red. Yellow. Gray. Blue. Purple. And skip brown white. All right. Now, will I really have shorts? Well, maybe not. going on here okay let's see Oh no. All right. I hope I didn't just record like five minutes of garbage. Unless I misclicked somewhere. All right. Uh, about to test with the keyboard tester. All right. Uh, let's reset that. All right. So, first off. Program, remap, keypad, pause, break, F12. That is the print screen button. Okay, so that short circuit, short circuit was causing a lot of havoc. Let's try this now. F8, F7, F6. Five, ah, oh, so close. F3, two, F1, escape. So only F4 is giving me trouble now. Just the gray connector. Only F4, all right, all right, what's going on here, F4? Yeah, 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 that's fine, sorry. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I want. Got basically like a stuck key or something. All right. All right. So we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Getting closer. Okay, so I said F4, right? One, two, three, four. It is this one, so it's not working. So what is going on here? Something with, is it the key that's dead? Is it the not making contact? It is effectively not making contact. If I touch the leads directly, this, their legs on the okay so I've got a I've got a problem with the soldering job actually I think when I soldered this wire I may have mo jiggered around the solder yeah I, I did and it no longer contacts the leg okay this is easy enough to fix it's momentarily disheartened there disheartened I'm going to just give me a quick minute get some more water
All right. Back with some more soldering. Hopefully this is the last job to fix. I don't, don't even need to use the third hand for this. Just gonna double, triple check. This just started beeping all right. Yeah, I've lost my like 10x magnifying whoop. It used to be around. I dropped it like 10,000 times and it broke. I'm gonna order one very soon. Yeah, that leg is not contacting. Okay, perfect. Put that here for now. Find a better place for it later on. All right, all right, all right, all right. I should say again that I don't believe this would be a problem with normal components. It's because the legs are so darn short on these switches. All right. Now, let me just quickly that should be the ticket. Should be the ticket. Let's check out the keyboard tester again. Let's reset it. Let's Connect the keyboard. Uh-oh. All right. The reason this is happening is just because there's a bunch of keys under here. If you push on them, the keys get pushed in. So. F4, F3, F2, F1. I think I've got a few remaps in there that are incorrect there, but wait, what's going on here? Why is it doing three, four, three, four? Uh, is it because of a remap? I think there's a macro to reset the whole memory there. Uh, uh, or maybe it's even a macro, I'm not sure. First hold program, then shift. As you're holding those two keys, tap down F10. So, yeah, I think I need to do that before I actually, before I actually solder everything or screw everything in because, all right, and that was, that was extreme. It's starting to look like a keyboard now. There we go. Try to reset the keyboard memory so that I can be absolutely sure there's nothing wonky going on with the circuit over here. So these lights are keypad. So keypad, all right. And then scroll lock, which would be this guy. And the lights are off. And caps lock. And then the next one is numpad, I think, which is, uh, oh man, which is which one again? 
I don't even remember. I think it's this and then this. No, I can't remember. Anyways, all right. And then, so what was the reset procedure? It was program shift F10. So program shift and then, all right. I've just done a soft reset. All right, now I can turn this off by using this. Sorry. Sorry, I turned off the normal key click. There we go. Now, all right, back to the keyboard tester. All right, program, keypad, pause, break, scroll lock. Let me reset there to make sure I'm not hitting any. There we go. Print screen. All right, escape. F 12, 11, 10, 9, and then 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Escape. This is perfect. So I had some macros programmed in there, probably because of some false contacts. It's very easy to remap keys here, uh, remap keys and create macros actually. So that's why I wanted to reset the memory. It looks like this works completely. No fault contact. Wait. This is a million times better than what I had before with the domes. These clicks I can hear here, you probably can't pick them up, maybe. But there you go. First generation one Kinesis Advantage that uses Cherry ML switches. Thing of beauty. All right. Now, final assembly. Final assembly. This will be good. Let's hope I don't break anything. All right. Get rid of this half of the shell for a minute. Got to think just now. All right. Now, these are the dome keys I don't need anymore. I will need, however, the screws for the keyboard. And there are quite a few, many of which I don't recall where they go because it's been so long since I started this project. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm virtually certain these long screws are meant for the case. Uh, let me just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much certain. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right. I can't say this job is pretty, but it is functional. For those who haven't seen this episode, I lifted a trace trying to get this desoldered. I'm going to fix that. Oh, it, this is fixed, but I'm going to fix that <laughs> trace pulling situation soon. I'm planning on ordering a desoldering gun. Um, not that I wasn't careful when I did this, but I was, uh, I actually pulled out the trace after desoldering because I thought there was a hot hair stuck on the keyboard, but it's actually the trace itself. So I cleaned this out a little with my dad's compressor, uh, today, this morning, I cleaned out the front of the keyboard, removed the old grungy pads I had there, um, and replace those soon. But for the first, in the meantime, I'm going to connect or not connect, but screw this in where it needs to go. There we go. That's kind of hard to flip all this around, but it is, well, you know, knock on wood quotes, but uh, it is fairly uh, resilient piece of circuitry, this thing. 
uh, the, all the connectors are flex and even the, the PCBs on the key wells are flex and it's, it's pretty nice it's pretty nice I really don't regret this purchase it has served me well over the years and it continues to serve me well it's kind of cute though eh? with the the rainbow cables and all all right let's get this placed in there all right like this all right make sure that the LEDs are in their proper sockets which they are not right all right there we go all right it's aligned properly What is it complaining about here? There we go. All right, like so. Just fitting things back where they go here. Looking good, looking good. Right. Now start screwing stuff back in. Pull out some tools, some little screwdrivers. But first things first, let's get the motherboard back in. Ooh. Oh man, this one is a paint okay. okay slightly bigger screwdriver here Got a little more torque with the screwdriver, but the, the head could be bigger, I must admit. size of the type of these screws rather is where you can tell that this keyboard was meant for hand assembly and I mean all these through hole components it was probably yeah this was machine soldered but still all right moving on Oops. thumb key well in like so just make sure nothing moves there all right should actually even screw in my little my little boards here I actually have two screws for that just put the screwdriver and it away. Use these Robertson screws, which, by the way, rest of the world, Robertson screws rule. They are the best. Now that the patent's expired, you should start using them. They are amazing. You should read about them if you don't know about them. They're basically the square head uh, screws. The amazing torque. The screws stay onto the screwdriver by themselves check it out you know just put it on the screwdriver and then boop 
No need to stick anything. Magical is that it's not magnetic either. It's just the screw head shape that does that. All right, it's not going anywhere. So that screw is really just to make sure that nothing, nothing moves there. But uh, in the in the end, it's really the keyboard case itself that's holding everything in place. There are these legs here. They actually rest against the back of the keyboard shell and uh, they make sure that everything stays nice and snug and so when you push in on the keys they don't move inside the keyboard or anything like that yeah whatever let's, let's just use this screw here all right and then this one like that oh and i gotta be careful actually there's one here this one i think that needs to be uh, yes, I think this is the one. It's a slightly different screw and it needs to be strain relieved like this on one of the key wells. There we go. It's not going to move. And then keep working down the list of screws. All right. I think I added a screw too many there. Yeah, one one of these screws here is actually meant for the case that the other shell to fit into, so I'll have to remove it. I think it's this one, the top one. Pretty sure it's the top one actually. Check with you there. But, uh, so that is the bottom. Uh, wait. Not like this. That and this screw. Yeah, it's this one. Like so. It's kind of. Weird though, am I missing screws? That'd be weird. How would I have lost them? Oh no, I just didn't look well enough in my parts bin. Okay, so I'm missing one, two screws. Starting to look like a keyboard again. Let's see what this looks like on the other side. Oh, check it out. Check it out. Mechanical keys in the function row. back to work right now to use this all right now it might be a little tricky to fit this wiring in I might just actually add a small piece of tape to make sure it doesn't interfere <laughs> Meh. I should be okay yeah Meh. That's a bunch of hesitation. All right, now I need to 
connect the daughter board again. All right. Now I'll put them back. Let's, let's not let's not rush this. Plus, my favorite electrical tape ever. Stretches and really nicely wraps all the electrical connections, which is not, I guess, not so useful in this case, but, or required, I should say. It's never not useful, but. Check everything works again. Reset. Use escape one. Again, and put the final final screws back in. Perhaps. Or rather, sorry. Actually, let me put in the keycaps first. Alright. Starting to look like an actual version two. I mean, no, I mean version two look great, their machine she made and everything but this is not a such a bad approximation I must say oh, this keycap is garbage here's another one there we go my sister got me some nice uh, this 
sort of orange, but not the typical sort of Daigle orange that people see, like the Prusa orange filament uh, for my birthday. It's like this nice uh, sort of orange creamsicle, creamsicle orange filament. I used to make some keys for this. I don't know, I'll have to see how well it goes with the blue of the home little keyboard keys. Oh, a little rubbing here. All right, I actually have it here. Pull it out. Kind of a nice color. Oh, it doesn't really come out nice on the webcam, but yeah, really creamsicle for the edge. Right. Another nine keycaps to go. Cap has a weird feel. I just print a new batch or something. Check it out. That is a long time to make. Connect the keyboard again. Of course, I don't have any legends, but whatever. All right, so escape, reset it again. Escape, is this working? Sorry, I've got the right thing here. Yeah, okay, escape of one, of two, three, four, five. Are you kidding me? What key is this? <sighs> Pause break. <laughs> it all worked a second ago. did how did I what happened there that's really weird so a third from the end almost almost Hmm. Okay. Any 
shorts? No. One, two. Does look suspicious this one. Oh ho, ah, yes, there is a small piece of crap that is stuck here. There we go. So, yeah, for sure, the next time I do this, it's gonna be with bigger components. Oh, there's another piece of crap and deeper trenches. I mean, this is really, it's like a worst case scenario. It's the first time I try to make this technique work, you know, so. No shorts anymore. All right. Let's try this again. All right. Let's make this gesture. I don't know why. All right. And All right. It works. Uh oh. Uh oh, I've got a, a stuck key here. Let me just disconnect from our DP and connect again. the keyboard up again for what is hopefully the last time. So even though this was kind of a bit of a nightmare for short circuits or open circuits, um, all the flaws were easily seen with the naked eye and they were trivially repaired. So I guess there's at least that. And moving forward, hopefully I can settle on some trace width and, and depth parameters, depth because you have to cut through with a knife that will make it very easy to reproduce these results.
so this key binds a little bit in the corner. What I'm going to do probably is just print some slightly longer key caps. Oh my god, this is going to make my life so much easier at work. Because with the functional F9, F10, F11, F12, it's going to be great. I'm super happy. I'm jazzed. So there you have it. Row function keys. Another row function keys. 3D printed. I'm print another set. They're not all perfectly aligned because I didn't, it's hard to push them all the way in the MLs, but it's actually not that visible once you're sitting and looking at the keyboard. Not a perfect result, but much better than what I had before. I am very happy. Thank you for joining in on this odyssey. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll see you soon for another project or two. I will be modifying my other keyboard like this. I plan on doing it all in one sitting and one video from end to end. But before I do that, I'm probably gonna wait until I receive my desoldering gun so I, do a, I can do a cleaner job on the motherboard. And yeah, uh, have a good night. Thanks, uh, thanks for stopping by.